Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about digoxin, that big NCLEX hitter. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out ninjanerd.org, where you can get the notes and the whiteboard lecture drawings all on our website. Let's get started. So digoxin is one of those big hitters on the NCLEX, and we're going to talk about this medication, what's going on with it. So also known as linoxin, but usually it's called digoxin or dig, and it is in the class of cardiac glycoside. What does that mean? So digoxin isn't a medication that we give for the blood pressure. It's a medication that we give for other problems with the heart, like our contractility or our problems filling or even with our arrhythmias. So the indication for digoxin is someone with a mild, usually systolic heart failure, somebody who has a problem with their contractility and then we might want to increase it, and someone who has some type of arrhythmia like AFib or a flutter. So typically, what we're talking about here is someone who has a problem with either pumping or emptying through the heart. So we're looking at someone that might need a heart rate that's too high or a stroke volume that's too low, and we might have to increase that stroke volume or decrease that heart rate. And how do we do that? How does digoxin do that? We're gonna talk about that through the mechanism of action here. So we're looking at this right here as a myocardium cell. And we know that on all of our cells, on our myocardium, we have a sodium potassium ATPase, right? We have this exchange of sodium and potassium. And in the myocardium, what happens is we have potassium that gets pumped into the cell and sodium that gets pumped out of the cell. And that works normally, just how it works every day. It's pumping out sodium, pumping in potassium. And what happens is the dioxin comes along and it inhibits this ATPase. And it doesn't necessarily turn it off all the way, but it slows it down significantly. When it slows that down, the sodium in the cell is going to increase. So let's remember, let's back it up. But now that we're turning this off, we're turning off this sodium potassium, or we're, we're slowing it down significantly to the point where sodium inside the cell is now getting really, really high, and potassium outside the cell is getting really, really high. Because of this sodium getting high, we have this calcium sodium or sodium calcium exchanger that normally wants to bring in sodium because sodium is getting pumped out here, so it wants to bring in regulation, get sodium back in. Because the sodium now in the cell is high, it's not going to bring it in as often. If it's not going to bring it in as often, it's going to keep this calcium in the cell. So calcium in the cell is now going to increase as well. And we have now have an increase of sodium and calcium within the cell. So now our intracellular sodium and our intracellular calcium is increased. Intracellular. Great. Okay, so let's run through this again really quickly. We have intracellular sodium and calcium that is now increased. Digoxin comes in and it inhibits our sodium potassium ATPase. It directly does this. It goes in and says we're going to slow this down. Because of that, it indirectly affects our sodium calcium exchanger, right? Let's think about this again. Potassium is getting pumped in, sodium is getting pumped out. Potassium is getting pumped in, sodium is getting pumped out. Digoxin comes in and says, no, 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 I'm going to stop that. Because of that, our sodium inside the cell is now increasing. Because it's high, sodium is not going to be getting exchanged in for calcium to go out on our exchanger. So since that sodium is high enough, sodium is not coming in, therefore calcium is not going out as often. And that results in a higher sodium and uh, calcium in the cell, okay? So intracellular calcium will then increase, and because of this, we have an increase in our contractility. So that is the main mechanism of action of digoxin. It also can affect the vagus nerve, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So we have this mechanism of action. We have a positive inotropic. We have an increase in that squeeze, that contractility, right? That's what this means. We also have a negative chronotropic, which means it's going to slow the heart rate. And we also have a negative dromotropic, which means it's going to slow down the 
conduction between the heart. So from our SA to our AV node, and that is all with that effect of the vagus nerve. With all this, we do have an increase in our stroke volume, which is great because when we increase our stroke volume, if you remember our cardiac output video, we can increase our cardiac output because we know that cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. And that's really important with our patients with AFib or having troubles with heart failure because we're not pumping, we're not emptying as often or as emptying as effectively as we need to. So we need to increase that cardiac output. So we talked about the mechanism of action. We talked about how digoxin works in the body. Let's talk about now how it affects the body. All right, ninja nerds, now we're gonna give our patient digoxin. And when we give them digoxin, what we're gonna be looking at are some of the side effects typically that could lead to toxicity or the things that we've been looking for, especially in the NCLEX questions, they might say this patient might be in a toxic range of digoxin. So the side effects that we're gonna be looking for are GI issues like nausea, vomiting, anorexia, or any type of belly pain, abdominal pain. We're gonna be looking at neuro, particularly the fatigue or the confusion, something like altered mental status or anything that would indicate to them that maybe they're, they're a little more tired than normal could be an indication that there's a neuro effect. We're gonna be looking also at their visual. So when you talk to your patient or assess your patient or you're reading the questions for the NCLEX, you're looking at things like blurry vision, fuzzy vision, uh, yellow green halos that they're seeing, or they're having trouble reading like they didn't before. This could be an indication that there's a visual side effect. And the last is a cardiac, like an arrhythmia. So if they're on their telemetry and there's an arrhythmia there that wasn't there before. All of, these effect, all of these side effects here could indicate to us that our patient is in a toxic or in a toxicity of digoxin. And the patients that are most at risk for this are typically the ones with renal failure or are patients that are on diuretics. What we're looking at here is a patient that's on a loop diuretic, like ferrosamide, is going to have a low potassium. And when they have a low potassium or hypokalemia, they are at a risk for toxicity. And we want to make sure we keep an eye on these patients because if they have that lower potassium, they have an increased risk for toxicity. This does not, digoxin does not cause low potassium. Digoxin is not working on the potassium mechanism. It's working on our sodium. Remember our sodium and our calcium. But patients that are on diuretics that have a lower potassium are at a higher risk for that toxicity. And that has to do with the free uh, amount of digoxin that's floating around because potassium and digoxin can bind to a similar site. And if there's lower potassium not fighting over digoxin to get into those spots, then digoxin levels are gonna rise a lot quicker and a lot higher. So what we're looking at here are patients that are most at risk for toxic or what you're looking at in the questions or who's gonna be toxic the fastest are the ones that are gonna be low potassium, which is a potassium of lower 3.5, a high calcium, which is gonna be over 10.2, or a low magnesium, which is our 1.5. And you also wanna just keep in mind that creatinine level that's gonna be telling us about our kidney function, what's going on, is if it's greater than 1.3 or higher. So what does all this mean? Uh, and how do we know our patient is toxic? So you're looking at this question, or you have a patient that you know is on diuretics, and you're thinking to yourself, how do I know this patient is toxic or they are in a toxic level and I need to let my doctor know? What we're looking at is our blood test. There is a toxicity range of 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. And what this means is if they are over that, if they are over 2, then they are in that toxicity. And this is the range that uh, the NCLEX uses. There's other ranges as well that can be patient-based uh, with whatever type of underlying conditions they have. So just keep in mind that this is for the test, but their your facility that you work at or any other patient, it might be a different range for them. But anything over two is we're looking at toxicity. And what happens? Our patient is in digoxin toxicity. We're like, oh no, they're having some halos or they're having some confusion. We are going to, one, hold the dose. Don't give the patient the next dose. Two, notify their doctor, their healthcare provider. Let them know, hey, I think this patient's uh, digoxin level is a little too high and make sure you assess your patient any fur further. Check their arrhythmias, you might be looking for another EKG, you might be listening to the lung and their heart sounds, and you're gonna possibly give, or hopefully give, the antidote Digibind, which means that it's going to bind to digoxin and not allow it to bind to our, our sites in our body and 
eliminate that free floating digoxin and hopefully bring that level back down to a safe level. Toxicity is not something we want to mess around with. We want to correct it immediately. With that being said, we want to make sure that when we put our patients on digoxin and when we are monitoring our patients, we are teaching them and doing our interventions. And what do those things look like? The first thing is to assess our patient's apical pulse. We want to make sure, especially on the NCLEX, it's going to be one full minute. So we're going to be listening to the heart for 60 seconds. And we're going to make sure that we're going to hold it if it's lower than 60 beats per minute in an adult, lower than 70 beats per minute in a child, and for an infant, lower than 90 to 110 beats per minute. So you're going to hold that medication and not give it to them. And what is the apical pulse? What does that mean? The apical pulse, remember, is our fifth intercostal space midclavicular line that's listening at the apex of the heart. That's where we can hear all of our valves opening and closing so we get a nice sound of our heart and we're getting it for a full minute because there could be arrhythmias underlying. If you only listen for 10 seconds, you might miss that PVC or the extra beat or anything like that. So make sure we're listening for that full minute. Our patient also is going to get blood draws, typically when they're put on it, put on the medication. It does take uh, a couple days or so, almost a week, for it to get to a therapeutic level. But we're going to be checking those blood draws. Specifically, specifically we're going to be checking that potassium level. We're going to be checking their kidney func function, the BUN and creatinine. Remember that specifically, if it's greater than 1.3 creatinine, if it's too high, then we're gonna have some issues. And remember, that is a sign for toxicity or a indication that they could be going toxic soon. And then our digoxin levels, anything greater than two nanograms per milliliter is also an indication of toxicity. If our patient misses a dose, they're not going to take an extra dose. They're not gonna say, oh, I forgot my morning digoxin, so I'll just double down on two tonight. That's a no, no, just take the dose as scheduled and go on to the next one tomorrow and teach them their signs of toxicity. What are those signs again? That alter mental status, the change in the vision, any type of uh, yellow green halos or any type of chest pain, arrhythmias, things like that. You wanna make sure that they're notifying their doctor and getting those blood levels drawn. Okay, engineers, in this video, we talked about digoxin. I hope it made sense. And make sure you check out our website, ninjaner.org, where you can find this and many other notes for all of our lectures here on YouTube. And as always, until next time.